What is going on, guys? Welcome to yet again another Wednesday preview video for the Big 12 All Team Builder Dynasty. We're going to kick this one off with the recruiting board for McAllen, and then we're going to go look at Little Rock's recruiting board as well. So, this is going to just be a nice little quick rundown of the recruiting board. I'm not going to get too in depth with a lot of the players. You guys can do that for yourself. You can look and see who they're leading on. You know, even, even pause the video as well. So not too much analysis here. My brother is not here with me for this Wednesday uh, update video. So basically, I want to use this time just to just to talk about some things with the dynasty and you know, basically college football related, like NCAA football 14 related uh, as it goes on the series. Um, so. Guys, I want you guys to be able to get your picks in on the website. So I know a lot of you guys have not been able to do so. A lot of we got a lot of blanks, got a lot of blanks on those uh, submission forms. So please go to the website, GoGloverGaming.com. Go to the go to the pick center, and then make your picks through uh, that section. That'll be updated every single uh, Sunday night. Okay, so if, if, if not Sunday, it'll be Monday. If not Monday, it'll be Tuesday. Regardless, you guys got a whole entire week to go to go get after that and uh, basically get your picks submitted for uh, Saturday games. Um, that's when all the uploads will be. Now, as, far, as far as Team Builder goes, I know it's down and it doesn't look like it's coming back for the foreseeable future. But you guys can see Billy Adams here, quarterback 75 overall. He's definitely going to McAllen over three 3.9 grand in first place right there, right? So that's probably going to be the big signing for them. Um, but just because Team Builder's down doesn't mean that we're going to stop this series and doesn't mean we're going to stop putting out more NCAA football content. Um, even even if the Big 12 ends at some point, I don't know when that's going to be, but even even if it ends, it's it's going to... We've got other teams in line, right? Other teams that we have... As we see a nice little uh, wide receiver here, Thomas Lopez for uh, Little Rock. Marcus Hollins, obviously, at 74, outside linebacker. They need that guy. Serge Cobb, Camu lead. Um, we're going we're gonna to keep continuing on with NCAA 14. we got teams in the wings uh, probably for another, di another dynasty. I'm not going to tell you guys when we're going to post that or uh, how many you know how many teams we're gonna do because you know sometimes we might be even be able to do like a like a partial team dynasty where it's not completely 12 it might be like four or five you know and like in the sec or something we've had a lot of requests for sec acc has gotten a lot of requests big 10 mac so i mean we've got teams to do this and get this thing done but you know it's just it's all a matter of when right so i don't know when that's going to happen but just be be for sure be content in the fact that NCAA 14 is not going away on the channel. You can have some uh, assurance in that. So, all right. So you guys saw the recruiting boards. Obviously, McAllen and Little Rock have a lot of good things going for them. Hopefully, they can capitalize on some of that uh, that momentum moving forward. Now, if we look at the top 25 here, Ardmore last week was number three. We vault over to number one. You guys saw that last Saturday. Washington number two. Texas, Ohio State. And ACU round out the top five. Denver Tech goes to number six after losing to Ardmore. Alabama has two losses, and they move down to uh, 19th. So, interesting. But we look at this. Number 18, Nebraska. 8-0. Oh. Look, look at the body of work here. I mean, a Scott Frost team, right? But he's actually with – he's still with the um, – he is still with the UCF Golden Knights, I believe. So we see Miami number 20, Oklahoma State 3-3 three and three right now. Miami's not playing too bad, but they just lost to Nevada 38-52. Come on, Midland State, Camu, those two teams need to be better than Miami in my opinion. We also have Little Rock receiving some votes and a couple teams dropping out of the top 25. You guys saw that. So Heisman Watch, we got Chris Warren, Miles Gaskin leading the way, and a surprise, a surprise guy getting in there, right? I mean, we saw Chris Golston with... His monster type of games, he's got 22 touchdowns in his career, 13 of them coming from this season, and the yards are pretty healthy. The yards are pretty healthy. The receiving yards, you know, doesn't do a whole lot of that, but nice to have a little chip in there. So if we can see the players of the week for last week, NCAA right there. Now we're looking at Price Greer and A Money Stoudemire. Four touchdowns, 255, only seven incompletions. Almost had an 
100 yard rushing performance and we saw Price Greer's performance there and then when you look at Sam Holy Cross and Dee Dee Dukes those are well deserved guys Sam Holy Cross was the main reason why Kansas a and won that football game with the two turnovers the two forced fumbles and then Dee Dee Dukes uh, with his rushing totals and just overall stat stuffing type of game so when we look at the conference standings Big 12 East Ardmore and ACU you know we're playing against them on Saturday so this is basically for the division right this is basically for the division and if ACU loses and we just keep winning right uh, we're probably gonna win that division right if we lose to ACU we're gonna have to win out the rest of our games and ACU is gonna have to win out the rest of their games for a playoff or a tiebreaker which would then end up going to ACU so we actually need ACU to lose twice if we lose to them at some point to win but you guys can see the West Conference standings here, and it's surprising that Kansas A&M is in first place right now. <laughs> They're three and one in the conference, right? And now they get Denver Tech this Saturday, and you guys can see here that that's actually going to be a huge game for them, huge, huge game for them. All right, so let's take a look at the previews for these games. ACU against Ardmore, number five, number one, two top five teams. You guys have already read Heel Boys picks here. I'm gonna go with. I'm going to go with ACU. I, I just think that our defense has been uh, kind of shoddy all year long, and I think it's trying to stop A-Money Stoudemire is going to be tough to handle on that offense. That defense for them as well is going to be really, really hard. So I'm going to go with ACU. Shreveport, Broken Arrow. I think that Brian Street really has to get this one. I really think he's got to get this one. It's going to be tough for him, but I'm going to go with Shreveport in this one because of the defense. I think that they can run the ball against that Broken Arrow defense. So I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Shreveport and Andre Wingo. Denver Tech, Camu, I'm going to take Denver Tech in this battle here between two option type of teams. And then Nebraska State against Odessa. I'm going to take Odessa State. I just think that that offense for them is just way too tough to handle for the Prairie Dog defense. I don't think they can hang. I don't think they can hang. But here's the key thing to note. Alfred Johansson, the head coach for Broken Arrow, is now going to a multiple playbook to kind of help guide Brian Street through the offense. And you guys can see that because of the playbook changes, it doesn't seem to matter here because uh, he's not getting a whole lot of help from his teammates. So a lot of audibles have been working on, trying to get trying to get uh, people open here, force people open based on what the sets call for, the defensive sets. You guys can see that uh, Nathan Rowe is dropping passes left and right. Street's not getting much help here. Even on the open throws with Keegan Coleman, like these are these are going to be contested throws because a lot of their receivers is just not getting open here. So Street's going to have to start firing things through windows that he hopes and he anticipates to be open. Not a lot's going to be just glaringly open for him. So you guys can see again that based on what the defense is throwing after them, they're going to be able to audible with a more multiple style of playbook. They're going to be able to have a lot of plays at their disposal. But again, this all comes down to Brian Street and the center's ability to uh, call plays at the line of scrimmage and get that thing going. So guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you leave a like and I'll see you guys on Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed this Wednesday video, this quick Wednesday video. I'll see you in the next one. As always, peace.